Ready. Look, time flies when you're having fun. It's uh, great to see so many people in attendance thus far in the uh, 13th annual World Veg Festival sponsored by the San Francisco Vegetarian Society this year hosting the 40th International Vegetarian Union Congress. <laughs> Woo! Great to see you here. I don't know, all the attention recently was on the uh, Republican and Democrat conventions, but this is the place where change will really happen. If we want to make this a better world, we have to talk to everyone out there about going vegan to save their children from cancer, heart disease, stroke, to save the planet from global warming and to save the animals. And uh, we have uh, our folks who are coming up to, uh, to welcome you here today from the San Francisco Vegetarian Society and the International Vegetarian Union. Uh, my name is Bob Linden. I'm your uh, MC and I host the radio program Go Vegan Radio with Bob Linden. And, whew, and uh, thank you. Uh, Dixie was my guest on last week's show, so if you go to GoVeganRadio.com and click on uh, Listen to Past Shows, you'll hear the interview with Dixie. And I just want to mention one quick thing before I head back to my booth inside there. Um, Dixie May is a true hero. She's, she's a, an angel among us, really, isn't she? I mean, we're, we, are so, we are so fortunate. I mean, she has done more for you know, San Francisco and the world than you know, fill in the blank with the name of the politician of your choice. It, re it really doesn't matter. Um, and you know, she, she became interested in this when she was like five years old because she cared about animals and she was upset uh, on a family fishing trip. So a lot of us are here today because of the, the deep love we have for animals. And, and we know the only way that we can really save them from suffering is to convince everybody uh, to stop eating them and to stop wearing them and to stop experimenting on them. And Dixie has dedicated her whole life to this and I just want you to know that I'm holding a Dixie May appreciation dinner on Monday evening at uh, Loving Hut, uh, 524 Irving Street uh, in San Francisco. And I just want an evening where we go and just show her how much we, we really do love her and we really do. So. Um, there's more information at uh, at my booth inside Go Vegan Radio. You'll see the the cow with that. Oh, it's similar to that that what's hanging over there, inside there. And uh, there's more information on this dinner. So um, right now uh, I uh, give you to uh, the San Francisco Vegetarian Society and the International Vegetarian Union and my favorite hero, Dixie May. <laughs> I want, to wel I want to welcome everybody here. As Bob said, this is our 13th annual, and um, it's gotten bigger and better every year. Uh, and I'd just like to let you know that uh, if you're local, uh, we would welcome your, your membership, because that's what helps us to uh, put on these events, donations and memberships. Uh, the Society's been in existence 44 years, although I've only been involved with it 43 years. Um, but that's quite a few years. <laughs> um, this year we, we are really pleased, oh, well I would like to say we're all volunteers, none of us are paid. So if you become a, if you're not yet a vegetarian, you become one, I mean, we don't personally benefit, we're not selling anything. <laughs> we're just the philosophy. Um, we would like to really you know, welcome those of you who have come from all over the world. I know that there are very many uh, people here who uh, are here just for our event and I appreciate your coming to us. We have so much going on in San Francisco, <laughs> so many diversions. So those of you who are local or visitors, I'm glad you chose us uh, today. I would like to just take a second to um, to, um, we, we did receive a certificate of honor from our mayor with the seal of the city. I was so disappointed I had asked them. I told them we were having an international vegetarian union. I wanted him to welcome the IVU, but unfortunately he only honored us. So I appreciate that. It's the 13th annual World Vegetarian Festival, a certificate of honor. 
Whereas, on behalf of the city and county of San Francisco, I am pleased to recognize and honor San Francisco Vegetarian Society's 13th annual World Vegetarian Festival. I commend the Vegetarian Society for their commitment to providing information on the health, ecologic, and humane benefits of a plant-based diet, and for their efforts promoting a healthy plant-based diet. Congratulations on another successful festival, and best of luck in all your future endeavors. Therefore, I have hereunto set my hand and caused the seal of the city and county of San Francisco to be effected, Edwin M. Lee, the mayor. So I'm pleased that he recognized us. But I am sorry he didn't welcome the IVU because I, I, that's such an honor having them here. And we have so many wonderful guests who are going to be talking about it today. So first of all, I'm going to introduce Dilip Barman, who is the coordinator for um, the uh, North American Vegetarian Society. And he is also the president of uh, the Tri-Valley North Carolina Vegetarian Society that is famous for its largest vegan vegetarian Thanksgiving dinner that they put on every year. So congratulations to you, Dilip, for that. I wish we could imitate you on that. We haven't fi quite figured it out, but you've done a great job. So please welcome Dilip, and he will introduce the next speaker. Well, thank you, everybody. And this is my toddler. I said, do you want to sit down? And she said, no, I want to come too. So this is my toddler, Anu, and she's vegan since before conception. Right, Kadesh? <laughs> so so what, what an honor to be here. Dixie's done, Dixie and the San Francisco Vegetarian Society have done a great job having this uh, conference here, I believe, for 13... Thir can, you, can you guys hear me? I'm sorry. So I was just saying I'm honored to be here and I really appreciate the San Francisco Vegetarian Society that's been hosting this, um, this uh, uh, conference uh, for I think this is the 13th year. So the International Vegetarian Union is a group, I'm not going to say too much about it because we have our president Marley here and she's going to say more in a moment, but uh, International Vegetarian Union is um, a group that goes beyond you know, national boundaries, we try to encourage plant-based diets, vegetarianism all over the world. And I'm the regional coordinator. So we had the, uh, a conference in Dresden, four, I guess it was four years ago, and we decided that we were coming back to North America. And uh, we were trying to figure out where in North America, and, and we came up with this idea, and I, and I assume some of you may not know this, but this is only the first half of a great event. So as good as this event is, I invite all of you to catch a plane, or take a train, or drive, don't drive, come on down to Los Angeles. So uh, we have, we have a, a program starting on Thursday, a tour, and then on Friday, uh, there is an IVU portion of an excellent conference already there, VegSource, Jeff and Sabrina Nelson. They've been hosting that, as has the San Francisco Vegetarian Society here for many years. Um, so we're tagging on to them. So I invite you to come down, talk to any of us on IVU, go to IVU.org for details. Um, but anyhow, we had the idea of coming to North America and and, uh, and coming with the, uh, taking advantage of the two existing events. So this event right here with all the wonderful speakers and the food, as well as in Los Angeles, and we're adding our own little uh, additions because we have uh, brought a number of international speakers, and some of you in the hall are some of the international speakers. So I'm hoping that the combination with IVU adds a little bit of an international flair, a little bit of spice uh, to, to show us that, you know, sometimes in America, we're a big country, and sometimes we forget that, you know, we're just part of the world. <laughs> so it's not just in this country that we're trying to move people towards a plant-based diet, but it's in many other countries in the world. So I would like to invite you to please consider to enjoy this. And I thank San Francisco Vegetarian Society for allowing IVU to be part of it uh, and invite you to come to Los Angeles.
With that, I would like to um, introduce Marley Winkler. Marley is the president of the International Vegetarian Union. She's a sociologist. She's been a vegetarian since before some of us were born, since 1983, and yet she looks so, she is so young. Uh, and she's been vegan since 1995. Um, my own memory goes back to uh, Florianopolis, Brazil. Uh, she organized the, the 34th International Vegetarian Union Conference, the Congress in Brazil, and it, in my mind, is the model of World Congresses. It was an outstanding event. Um, I could go on and on about Marley. She has a long uh, background. I won't, but before I cede the mic, I do want to say that I am hosting um, a workshop of best practices around the world, and Marley will be on that, as well as about a dozen folks, uh, and that's, I think, in the garden room tomorrow. I think it's at 3.30. It's tomorrow afternoon. Please come to that because we can get ideas from each other of what works here, what works you know, in the UK, what works in Indonesia, what works in Brazil. So with that, Marley. Hello, everybody. It's a great joy, uh, with a great joy that I welcome all the delegates of the 40th IVU International Vegetarian Festival and Congress. Even though the internet is a very efficient means to communicate and promulgate our ideas, nothing replaces personal contact. And I am sure we will all leave this place with our motivation increased to continue our work promoting vegetarianism. The mecca of vegetarianism will certainly know how to welcome us. And I wish to thank everybody who worked hard to make this event successful, especially Dixie Mahi. Time is pressing for our message to be spread all over the world, showing the inescapable connection between a meat center diet and the destruction of uh, natural resources, health impairment, and ill treatment to animals. Humanity uh, claims for peace, but peace is not possible as long as it remains daily associated with bloody and cruel acts that are linked to the rearing and slaughtering of thousands and thousands of helpless sentient creatures. It is not enough to be vegetarian. We must be activists. So I invite all of you to enjoy these days and gather strength to better defend and promulgate vegetarianism in each one of your home countries according to your particular vision. Thank you very much. Now, I, I invite our manager, John Davis, to present. Uh, his, um, it, it is a history of vegetarianism. Mm, history. A, a summary. Summary. Yeah, a summary. Okay. okay. Can we get this up? this up? Can you hear me? Come up a bit. Marley will be back up in a few minutes now. Have we got, ah, we got the program. Okay, this is where you can look at the pictures instead of me, which is much more interesting. Um, originally, this, this was just going to be me talking, um, but we've got so many people here from the countries that are in these pictures. I've asked each of them to come up and talk for, for a couple of minutes when they're when their bit comes up. Um, we're already slightly late, so it really will have to be fairly brief for everyone. So let's go through the first bit. Can we go on one click with that? Yeah, OK. Now, the beginnings of organized vegetarians, the, the distinction there, um, that there were way back in history, there were lots of individuals and peoples uh, who were vegetarian of some sort. But the word vegetarian didn't exist. And if we click on one more. Uh, 1847 in England, a vegetarian society was formed, and this is where the word vegetarian first became well known. It was around just a few years before that, but not very much. 
Um, that society is still there, still going, and I'm a trustee, a, a director of it, uh, 165 years old, uh, not me, the society, I just feel it sometimes. Um, so, yeah, it's still going. Uh, one more click. Now, this is what surprises a lot of Americans. You know, you say, when, did, when was the first vegetarian society in America? They all say, oh, 1960s, the hippies. You know. uh, San Francisco Vegetarian Society started 1968. But this one, 1850 in New York. So it's been around a lot longer than most people think. That one lasted about 10 years. The Civil War caused huge problems, inevitably. But then another one started, and they came and went for a bit. Uh, the oldest one now is the Vegetarian Society of DC. And I'm looking around. Where is he? Where's well, stand up, Sora. Stand, Sora, stand up. Yeah. OK. Sora's the president of VSDC, founded 1927, still going. Oh, well, whatever. He, yeah, he's the man. Um, but even, even he wasn't there in 1927. But um, it's the oldest one in North America, still running. So it's been around a long time now. One more click. Okay, um, the Vegetarier Bund Deutschland, uh, 1867. It wasn't called that in 1867. There's been mergers and name changes. Uh, the chief executive of the, the German Vegetarian Union, where are there? He is, stand up, stand up. We'll call him up in a minute. He's there too. Yeah, okay. 1867, still going, still there in Germany. And they'll be back up in a minute and they'll all be coming up talking. Have we go on one more? Uh, International Vegetarian Congresses, uh, one click. Uh, the first one, 1889, in Cologne in Germany. Um, the, there were two societies in Germany. They invited the British over. They had a day of talks, and they went for a boat trip on the Rhine. Exactly the same as we do now, a mixture of talks and fun. Uh, but 1889, they were doing it way back. Now, one more click. One more. What's happened? Click the right arrow? No? It's gone wrong. Try going back one and forwards again. Uh, we were doing so well. Uh. You know the old... The old Right, picture of wrong order. Okay, go back again. Oh no, it's all gone crazy. Right, okay, now we're back on track. 1890, the second International Congress in London. They had people from Germany and France and all, there were more by this time in different countries. And again, the one that surprises people, you've already seen it, so it won't be a great surprise, but it should have been. Uh, if you go on one more click. 1893, an International Vegetarian Congress in Chicago. Anyone here from Chicago? No? Oh dear. Oh well. Um, so just in case you don't believe me on that, one more click. And there they all are. 1893, it was the Chicago World's Fair. Uh, and the front row in that picture are mostly British, the rest are from various parts of the USA and the local group in Chicago. Now, I was told, I read somewhere, uh, there were some people from Germany as well, but I haven't been able to find out much about them. But it was a genuine international event all those years ago. Um, and don't they look happy? Yeah, anyway, one more. One more? No? Is he going to go? Yeah, right. OK. Now, uh, very briefly on this, by, by 1908, almost every country in Europe had a vegetarian society. So they all got together in Dresden in Germany and founded the International Vegetarian Union, uh, which is what we all are today. Um, and you've got a list of countries. There. The red dots show you where all the congresses were held every two or three years for the first 50 years. And as you can see, they didn't go very far, all in Northwest Europe. In 1913, when they were in the Netherlands, a woman from San Francisco was there and wanted to have the next one in 1915 in San Francisco. And all the Europeans said, oh, they're too far to go. We can't do, can't do that. 
Well, he's not too far as you live in California. But it didn't happen. Um, and in fact, nothing happened in 1915 because the First World War that finished it. There was a 10 year gap. Um, but as you can see, we went all around different countries in Europe. One more. And then it started spreading out around the rest of the world. We had some in India, uh, 57. 67. That photograph is from 1967. That's the Dalai Lama opening the IVU Congress. He was vegetarian for about 18 months at the time, and then he's been on and off ever since. But he came and opened that one for us. Um, and one in Israel, 1969. Awful problems, as you can imagine, at that time. Very difficult. OK, one more. Now it gets more interesting, I think. Yeah, we move on to America, which is what you all want to know about. Um, one more click. And just when you think we're getting to the USA, it is actually Venezuela. 1972, the first regional congress was a Latin American congress in Venezuela. And I'm looking around, where's Freya? Right. Well, are they, were you there? No, Jay went. Jay went. I know he. I just wondered if you went with him. Anyway, yeah, I'll come back to you in a minute. <laughs> Don't go away. Um, yeah. Now that Jay Dinshaw went there. Um, so we go on one more click. And, and Jay and I think Freya as well went to '73 in Sweden or the Netherlands. Yeah. Only Jay went. Only Jay went. Oh. And I get in trouble for not taking my wife for some of these things, you know? <laughs> yeah, OK. Um, so, yeah, as a result of this, they wanted to have a Congress in North America, but they needed an organisation to put it together. So in 1974, they founded the North American Vegetarian Society. The extraordinary thing about this, in, um, in England what had happened, there was a vegetarian society, which eventually uh, there was a spin-off became a vegan society. In North America, Jay founded and was president of the American Vegan Society, and I'm, looking, I'm watching Freya here to make sure I don't get this wrong, um, in order to widen the audience to get more people to come to this congress, they founded the North American Vegetarian Society to give it a bigger catchment, yeah? Right, good. Um, I, I write all this history from what I read, and Freya was actually there, so, you know. One more. Right, 1975, they actually got the first World Vegetarian Congress in North America, or at least the first after the 1893 in Chicago. Well, that was quite a long gap. Um, and it was in Orono in Maine. Had uh, one and a half thousand people there, the biggest uh, outside of India, the biggest ever at that time. It was huge. Uh, now, one more click is where's Dixie? Has she gone? Where is she? Oh, Dixie's gone away. Oh, it's a shame. That's Dixie. That's Dixie in 1975. She's seen this picture before. I did, I did this talk before in San Francisco. Um, but yeah, all those years ago, she was there, still part of the San Francisco Vegetarian Society. Uh, and she's still here and running it today. Uh, now, one more. OK, just let it run through. These are some pictures from that 1975 Congress. Now, at the top left is Jay Dinshaw. Sadly, no longer with us, but yeah. Amazing man. He was the mastermind behind 1975, yeah. Quite an incredible achievement, everything. Uh, there are a lot of other extraordinary people in that, that picture. I haven't really got time to explain them all. Um, bottom right, uh, Scott Nearing. Some of you might have heard of The Good Life, of the book called The Good Life. He wrote that. Uh, he was actually on the IVU Council for some years. He was involved, very active. Um, OK, one, one more. Now, while all this was going on, Freya's part in it was looking after the catering and feeding everyone, and she wrote a cookbook, which is that one in the top middle, completely vegan, of course, despite being called the vegetarian cookbook. Um, and there is, I think, a version of that still available. Well, it's, uh, it's been combined into the vegan kitchen. Yeah. Yeah, right. Okay. Now, I couldn't resist this. One more picture. 
That, that is J. M. Freya in 1975. Yeah, in the Indian gear. Yeah. Okay, one more. Now, ah, oh, where's Bill Harris? He's there somewhere, is he? Stand up, come on, get up, come on, come on. This is, this is Dr. Bill Harris from Hawaii. Uh, I, I, don't, I didn't ask him how old he is, but that photograph, the bottom one, that's Bill on a trampoline at the IVU World Vegetarian Congress in England in 1965. Yep. Now, were you there, Freya? I thought you were. You went to the 1965 I mean, incredible. These two people, 50 years of IVU Congresses. I can't imagine that. I don't think I'm going to live long enough. <laughs> yeah. Right, OK, let's go on. One more. Um, so after this big event in 1975, we go on, we've got more congresses, mostly back in Europe, moving around the world. The, the major event, of course, of the mid-90s was the internet. Uh, the first congress that we actually got online and we had a cyber cafe was in Johnstown near Pittsburgh on that photograph. Um, you can see the size of the computers in those days. Some of you might even remember them. <laughs> Enormous things. Um, but again, gradually going around the world and we, by 2000 we had one in Toronto and one in Edinburgh. Now during that time IVU ran into a lot of problems and difficulties uh, in the 1980s and 90s. Toronto, anyone here from Toronto? No? Ah! Well you were there, yeah. That Congress in Toronto and the one in Edinburgh kind of calmed it all down. They were well organised, very efficient. They got IVU back together and going again. Uh, but the real big event was the next one though. If we go on one more. Yeah. Um, now, where's Marley gone? I'll get, come back up, Marley. Um, if you do, just press one click, it will run through. This is 90, the 2004 Congress in Brazil, which for me changed everything. This was the first successful Congress in a developing country. We were moving away from Europe and North America and starting it all again. And as you can see, we had a rather nice place to have the Congress on the beach. So Marley's going to tell you a little bit about what's happened in Latin America since 2004. Just give us a brief update. Well, I have only two minutes, so it's only a very brief idea of what is going on. Uh, actually, now we have some movement in uh, most of uh, our countries in Latin America, especially in Argentina we have uh, uh, some groups. One of them have a magazine for 10 years now, a national magazine, and they have a Congress also. In Chile they, they are doing something, uh, they, they are um, having a conference every year also, and they have, uh, are having success in schools. Uh, Paraguay is, is, has a good group, uh, also Uruguay, and uh, well, we, we have uh, some movement all over uh, Latin America. But uh, uh, as John said, we organized it in Brazil in 2004, a big event. Uh, we organized actually the Vegetarian Society in 2003, one year before the, the, the conference, in order to, to have a uh, official um, society to organize this event. And this event uh, make all the difference. Uh, in Brazil, uh, it started to, to have uh, groups and uh, uh, internet pages all, all over the country. And uh, so now, now nine years um, later, we uh, just had a pool in Brazil. It was launched on the 1st of October because they wanted to, to um, to lunch in that day, because it's the vegetarian day. Uh, this pool was made by one of the biggest and, and more known um, survey uh, company, Ibope, and they found out that 8% uh, of the Brazilians uh, declared themselves veg vegetarians. So in nine years, we... Uh, we, um, we grow a lot. Uh, in our society, we are having a lot of uh, events, and we have uh, about 30 groups all over the country. 
But I can say that the, the, the one of uh, the things that uh, is more successful now is our campaign Meet Last Monday. It's very, it, it is, we are having it for three years now, and we have uh, the support of many uh, big cities, including Sao Paulo, where we launched it. And now, for instance, uh, one of, uh, of the, the things that happened because of this campaign, now we are having in all the 3,000 schools in, in Sao Paulo, we are having a, a vegan uh, day every week. So it, it means... It means two million meals, two million vegan meals every week. So it's a lot. And, uh, uh, and this is, for me, it's just the, 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 the top, the tip of the iceberg, because what is going to happen before that, before we get the, the support of the government, is that the, the work we are developing in the schools. Now the schools are asking us to go there and explain to them why why to stop eating meat one day? So our, our work will, will um, uh, start uh, in, in, this, in this time. So, I, I, well, I think it's a summary of a summary. <laughs> okay, so if we go on one more. Um, now, what I said, in that Congress in Brazil, uh, for me, it was a, a real change in IVU. We were moving away from Europe and North America. Um, from there on, we're looking at the developing world. I'm finding a new role for IVU on, on something really useful to do. Um, one more click. This is 2006 in Goa, in India. And I'm just going to go on for a minute, and then I'll ask Saurabh to come up and talk about India. Um, as you can see, another exotic location on a beach resort. We go to some great places with these congresses. If you just go on one more. Uh, we, uh, the, we had a problem at the time. IVU was 100 years old and we divided the world into six regions. Um, and when you look at that, it looks like a rather sort of British colonial way of thinking. There's the whole of Asia, India and China are all in one region. And down the bottom right is Australasia. Uh, the population of Australia, I think, is less than the city of Mumbai. Um, so this was getting a bit silly. Uh, one more click. We finally resolved that. We split Asia into two, so we got India and Southwest Asia um, and Asia Pacific on the right. Now, one more. We brought in two new regional coordinators who've done a fantastic job. Shankar Narayan on the left who can't be with us. Uh, the other one, Susie Anto, Dr. Susie Anto is over there and he's going to talk to you. <laughs> he's going to come up in a minute and talk. So, um, But at this point, what I want to do, oh, just one more, just to round this off. Uh, that's George Jacobs from Singapore who was, uh, he, he, still, he edits the IVU online news and for three years he was chair of the IVU council before Marley. Um, he does a fantastic job. But he's, he's been in East Asia and Singapore for 20 years, so he's more Asian than American these days. Uh, so he shifted the whole focus over towards Asia. Now, at this point, Shankar can't be here, so I'm going to ask Saurabh to come and say a little bit about what's happened in India since that event. Uh, Shankar's actually president of the Indian Vegan Society. Saurabh, uh, despite being from DC, was born in India. Yes. So he's our token Indian for today. Okay. Thank you. I'm Saurabh Dalal from uh, Washington, DC. And yes, I was uh, born in Mumbai and I have strong ties to India. So they asked me to give you a little snapshot of what's happening in India. So I, had, I did speak with Shankar Narayan, who couldn't be here, unfortunately. And just so, as many of you probably know, India is sort of the uh, roots of vegetarianism, ahimsa, and those concepts. And um, they have an interesting problem where a lot of the population is moving away from being vegetarian. So, of course, their struggles and their campaigns are a little different. But one of the big developments in India, as we've already heard about all over the world, is really the online presence. And there's so much happening in terms of uh, you know, Facebook and other organizations that are virtual organizations. So that's been the big energy in India. And those are translating into actions that are actually happening on the ground. But they're really leveraging this whole internet presence and so many people are getting more involved because they do have connectivity more and more. 
So the groups are flourishing, starting from the online presence, but now into real, uh, actual on the ground groups. And there's so much in terms of you know publishing of articles and major papers, major um, journals, magazines, and online media. Um, there are a number of organizations that are pretty active in India. There's the Indian Vegetarian Congress, which is really based in Chennai in the south of India. And then there are major groups in Mumbai and Delhi and some of the major cities. And then a lot of international organizations, U.S.-based and Western-based, that are very active. So then we have... Um, groups like PETA that are doing things at a very higher level in terms of the media, and then uh, Humane Society International. And there's a great group that's formed called the Federation of Indian Animal Protection Organizations in India that's doing an annual conference now. So many things are happening, things are moving and changing. And then uh, a few other local groups, but some U.S. organizations that are funding grassroots activities in India, like uh, IDA, uh, in defense of animals, that has a, a Booth here and Farm Animal Rights Movement, they're actually putting money into many local organizations throughout India. So those are helping. And uh, I think one of the big ideas, of course, is that it's spirituality and making that connection is one of the big motivations and areas that people are pursuing. And in the U.S., depending on the demographic, many people are becoming vegetarian and vegan because of animal issues, depending on the younger people, and health issues for, for people that are you know, a, a little older. But in India, it really is, it comes down to ethics. And now there's a movement towards veganism, which Shankar has helped launch. And so that's really amazing. And we took some just general numbers. It's not scientific. But if you had asked about five or six years ago, how many ethical, identified, identifiable vegans were there in India? If you had said about five, five to seven years ago, it would probably been about five or 10,000. Well, today they think it is probably tripled or quadrupled. And it's really a result of these groups that are actually active in India. So today, maybe there are 30,000 or 40,000 people who are identifiable as vegans uh, in India. And uh, just if anyone wants to know, some polls that were done show that about 30% uh, of the Indian population is lacto-vegetarian. And about another 10% are lacto-ovo-vegetarian. And then the remainder are people who really don't have any objection to eating meat, but maybe 60% of the population does consume animal products whether they have access to it or not, they do consume it occasionally. So still, there are about 400 or 500 million people in India that are vegetarian, lacto-vegetarian, and maybe about 30 or 40,000 vegans. But the uh, message really is, is that it's, it's going strong, people are really taking um, notice of it, and there are more and more publications and, and business ventures and all that that are looking to, to pursue that. And lastly, I want to mention is that uh, next year, the world, uh, the IVU is having a world event in Malaysia, and that's in October, uh, 4th to 9th of October. But before that, the weekend before, Shankar is also organizing the Indian International Vegan Festival. So if you really have time and the ability to plan a year out, please do so. Think about being in India the last weekend in September and then going on to Malaysia in the first weekend of October. All right, thank you. Okay, can we... Can we get back on the pictures? Uh, yeah, okay. No, well, I'm, I'm going to have to try to push on very quickly because we're getting short of time. Um, when we get this back, what you should see is a picture from 1908. Uh, yeah, go on one click from that. Oh no, we got a little bit about international vegan festivals, I forgot this. I'll go through this very quickly, if you click on again, that's um, Shankar again in India, organised an international vegan festival in 2007. These have been running since 1981, uh, roughly every other year because IVU was alternate years and they were in between. So you go on one more, that's in Brazil, that's Mali yet again, she's everywhere. Um, now one more. This was in Spain last year. And we got to the point where we got IVU Vegetarian Congress on the even number of years and an international vegan festival on the odd number of years. Uh, all the Vegetarian Congresses are vegan and some of the vegan festivals were not very festive, um, more sort of heavy lectures. So it's all getting a bit strange. So we sorted it out. Um, IVU is now going to be every year, but I'll come back to that in a minute. Um, have you got one more? One more? Yeah, OK, here we are, 1908. This is IVU started in Dresden in Germany. So naturally, when we got to 2008, we wanted to go back there, and we planned this six years ahead. So have we gone one more? 
as you can see, rather more people by 2008, and, and they're in colour. Um, and that's, that, that's some of the volunteers waving under the flag. So at this point, I'm going to ask Sebastian to come up and say a couple of words about, uh, well, a couple of minutes, about what's happened in Germany recently. Sebastian is the chief executive, as I said earlier, of the society that organised all this. There you go. Well, thanks, John, very much. Um, well, before I start, do we actually have any people from Germany or Europe in here? Maybe can you raise your hand just to see? Okay. <laughs> this is, okay. Well, actually, it was, um, I, was, I was being elected vice president at the Congress itself. We had an AGM there. So, it's, it's, yeah, it's actually quite interesting for me to speak what happened the, first, fast, the last four years. Uh, what well, had actually been really interesting four years uh, interesting time because we really improved a lot in Germany, the country itself in terms of vegetarian and veganism and the organization. Like in terms of membership, we tripled our membership within the last four years. So now we are about up to 7,000 members, so growing. Um, and we've, we've introduced a lot of campaigns. We are also having a Meat Free Monday, well we call it Thursday Veggie Day campaign. We have 23 cities by now which have uh, introduced the Veggie Day. Um, we are starting, have started a program with the Federal Ministry of Environment, which is, has been funded uh, by that ministry, uh, to a large caterer. So we are having training, cook chefs trainings um, for large caterers like in, in hospitals or in universities and schools and uh, like, um, yeah, official uh, houses and stuff like that. And there are actually 12 million people in Germany taking the um, like taking part in these kind of catering events. Um, we've also started a veg fair, like, uh, which was quite a success, so we're already having two of them each year with approximately 30,000 uh, paying participants. So this is, this is quite, quite good because we actually don't have to pay a lot because we have an agency doing that. And at the same time, uh, we can promote uh, a lot the, the vegan and vegetarian message. For example, like the first time we had it, we had seven interna like national TV stations there reporting about the fair and everything. So this was like all over the place. And um, we're starting, we're having a European conference, our European project, which is actually funded by the European Union by about half a million euros. Uh, and it's about to uh, improve the cooking training for, for chefs, like professional chefs. Um, as you, as you can imagine, usually they don't know how to cook vegetarian and vegan food very nicely, but this is about to change, at least in Europe, or Germany and Belgium, Austria, Netherlands. These are the countries taking part. Uh, yeah, and this, this program has just started. And then we have, of course, a lot of other smaller projects we are running, like, uh, well, we've invented a B12 toothpaste, like uh, I'm, I'm going to talk about it at, uh, at five o'clock in more details, and it's already going internationally because the company work, we are working with it's actually selling to 50 different countries. So uh, by that we can actually really uh, help the vegans and vegetarians worldwide. Well, I think my two minutes up. Uh, there's actually much, much more to say, but I think we have a best practice session tomorrow evening or tomorrow late afternoon. So I invite you all to join there to learn more. Yeah, thank you very much. Okay, while, while we're on Europe, um, because we've been concentrating on the developing world for the last, uh, well, since 2004, this is the only uh, event, major event we've had in Europe in the centenary. So I'm going to ask Shabari to come. Where's Shabari? Where's your, okay. Sorry? Oh, sorry. Yeah, vegan vegan festival in Denmark and a vegan festival in Spain. Yeah, sorry, I'm thinking about IVU. You're, you're quite right. Yeah, vegan festival too. Shabari, we, we have in Europe a European Vegetarian Union, which started off as part of IVU and then became completely independent. Shabari is the general secretary of IVU. Um, but before she comes up, I'm going to embarrass her totally because um, what I didn't know until yesterday, where, where's, where's your young man gone? There, oh, he's over the back. Now, um, they, they, they've got a rather different uh, reason for being here. They're actually on honeymoon. They got married three days ago in Las Vegas. <laughs> OK, now you can come up and tell them about Europe. <laughs> we, we are getting seriously up. Thank you, John. <laughs> Hi, everyone. <laughs>
Right, as, as John mentioned, uh, I, I'm actually a General Secretary of the EVU, the European Vegetarian Union. Um, what the EVU is, is, uh, is an umbrella organisation of vegetarian societies and organisations in, in Europe, but also it's a lobbying organisation, um, lobbying for, for change in European government legislation, um, also lobbying for illegal definition of vegetarian and, and vegan as well um, because that, that is really a very important issue in, in Europe and, uh, and basically also um, better labelling of vegetarian and vegan foods as, as well so the EVU is, is very much active in, in those areas. Um, the EVU itself has member societies and organisations in over 30 countries all over for Europe and are continuing to grow. Um, we're becoming more prominent in Eastern Europe as, as well, and uh, where vegetarianism is a, is is not of not very common, but uh, one of the, the great things about the EVU is, is that we, we're trying to actually encourage cooperation between the societies in, in Europe. Uh, to, to actually learn for, from, from each other. And uh, so some of the plans for the future, we, we have some, uh, some very exciting plans for the future as well. Um, in 2014, we're planning an EVU Congress in drama in Greece. Um, we haven't had uh, an EVU Congress for, for quite a while. Um, but, uh, but yeah, that, that should be an absolutely fantastic e event. Uh, in uh, 2017, we're planning to have the IVU VegFest in Poland, Poland as, as well. And so they're, they're the two major events that are, that are coming up. And, um, and I hope that, uh, that each one of you will, will be there. And so if you, if you have any questions about Europe or about the EVU in general, please come and see me. Thank you. We, we did go back in 2000, those of you that are in Toronto might remember, we went one better, there was actually a wedding during the Congress, uh, Peter and Jenny McQueen who were organising it, which was quite amazing. Uh, anyway, let's go on one more. Oh, it's not stuck again, is it? What we should get now, I think, is... Ah, a little bit about Africa. Now, we were hoping that our Africa coordinator would be here, but you know what it's like with Africans trying to get any money to go anywhere. Uh, it's really difficult, so he couldn't make it in the end. But if we go on, I'll show you the, the pictures. Um, this was the first ever vegetarian congress in Africa in Nigeria in 2007. Uh, IVU did the fundraising. We got some money, paid for the whole thing, so they all got free food and free accommodation. And they're people from all the neighbouring West African countries. So we go on again. Uh, this was the second West African Congress in Ghana. Uh, 500 people. They held it in a park. Uh, it's cheaper than renting a building. Uh, you know, everything's like that there. But it worked. And uh, again, we did some fundraising for that one. Um, okay, go on again. Uh, this was in the first East African Congress in Nairobi in Kenya, which I managed to get to. Um, so we're spreading around the continent. Let's go on again. Uh, and then we get to Indonesia and China. Keep going. Um, this was the Asian Vegetarian Congress in Batam Island, Indonesia. Uh, I'm going to ask Susie Anto to come up in a minute, but I think we'll move on first. Because uh, Just to say, the picture at the bottom left is one of, one of my favourite pictures. I was, it was a lunch table, and I was sitting opposite these two young women. and asked them why one of them had the headscarf and the other one didn't. And one's obviously Muslim. The other one is a Seventh-day Adventist Christian. And they were the best of friends. They went absolutely everywhere together all week. And I thought, what a great example of what vegetarians can do. Um, okay, let's go on one more. 
Um, Susie Anto and I went up to China, Xiaoman, in China for a huge trade fair and forum. I um, haven't got much time to tell you about it, but let's go on. Next one. Um, top right here is Gang Gang Ye from Beijing, who'd been running the IVU website in Chinese for 12 years, and I finally met him for the first time when we got there. The uh, picture top left is a plate of food. Um, it's the Beijing Olympics, the Great Wall of China made out of vegetables. Uh, they did lots of that. Let's go on again. Um, this was the, the forum. This was the first ever major international event. We have five speakers from different countries. It's in southeast China. Um, I know Susie Anto had been to China before meeting local groups. This was the first big one, wasn't it, the, when we got to that. Um, an extraordinary event just to be there at all. Okay, let's go on again. Um, the other place where we, we're going, where we've never been before, was Dubai in the United Arab Emirates. Um, and the top right picture is Sandhya Prakash, who's organised the Middle East Veg Group, and she had a local congress. We've got one more. This was the first ever Middle East congress, vegetarian congress. Um, and my favourite picture in that one on the right hand side is the Minister of Health for the United Arab Emirates lighting the lamp to open the congress. Um, we had a really great two days there as well with that one. Okay, let's go on again. Um, this is just a collection really of IVU in the 21st century and what you've got up there is Indonesia, China, Africa, Brazil, um, just all the places we've been. Okay, on again. And then the next big congress in Jakarta in Indonesia, we press one more, it should just run on. Uh, now I'm going to ask Susie Anto to come up and speak very quickly because we are really running over time. Yeah, I know. Um, right, we've got to go. Yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, we have two uh, vegetarian society in Indonesia. The first one is called Indonesia Vegetarian Society, and the second one will really, be uh, Vegan Society of uh, Indonesia. Both uh, Vegan and Vegetarian Society uh, has been uh, organizing most of the bigger uh, events in our country, including uh, the regional. And this is like uh, John To is the first, uh, I mean, the uh, International uh, World Vegetarian Congress from IVU, uh, which was held, uh, held in Jakarta in 2010 with about 8,000 participants for four days. And we continue uh, in the uh, Bali Islands for the, about three days. And uh, the last year, we had another uh, Asian Vegetarian Congress in China, supported by the Zhejiang University, and this is uh, the third bigger university in China, and supported by the mayor of the Hangzhou uh, city. And also the next one in this November, 23rd to 25th, we will be having our Asia, Southeast Asian Vegetarian Congress in Chiang Mai, in Thailand. And also next year <coughs> will be our 41st uh, IVU Vegetarians, uh, what do you call, Congress or Festival, will be held in KL. And we have uh, Tracy also be here, is uh, one of our organizers in KL. And this will be uh, organized by Malaysian Vegetarian Society. So actually, uh, roughly, we have a uh, vegetarian society in every country in our Asian uh, countries. So I think uh, this is most of the uh, what you call information that I can uh, share to you because of the limited time. Thank you very much for your kind attention. I should, should just mention, Susie Anto is head of the Indonesian Vegetarian Society. They've got 80,000 members. He's the president of the Indian Vegan Society, the IVU coordinator for Asia Pacific, vice president of the Asian Vegetarian Union. In his spare time, he did a PhD on uh, vitamin B12 in tempeh. And I think he's actually got a job as well. Uh, extraordinary. Right, go on one more. Okay, this is Australia. Oh, this is Sundara. Um, the, the, the picture at the bottom, I, took, I went to Sydney and did a talk there. Well, we haven't got time, so off you go. Um, hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Sundara De Silva from Australia. Uh, in Australia, we've got eight states, and most of the states have got their own one or more groups. Most states have got their own festivals. Um, if you like, the capital of veganism and vegetarianism in Australia is actually Melbourne. We have one festival there on World Vegan Day with about 5,000 people, which for us is quite a big event. Uh, the big things in Australia is social media as a tool for communicating, things like Facebook, the meetup.com, 
are very, very important, and especially the young people are all using these mediums to communicate more so than meeting in, in groups like this. Um, exciting things coming up. A new group, Vegan Australia, is about to be formed. Its main purpose will be lobbying government for change. So that, that'll be improved diet, improved environmental outcomes, all the things that we all know about, but governments often don't consider. Um, importantly, it, it is a growing movement in Australia, not as fast as we'd all like, of course, but um, that's why we're all here. And I'll finish with that because we've got no time. Thanks. Uh, OK, one more. We're nearly at the end now. Um, this, this was um, one of the most amazing things. We had a full vegetarian congress in China. If you're wrong, one more. Uh, it just runs through a lot of pictures. Marley and Susie Anto and George Jacobs, myself, all went to this. Um, we had a day, two, a day of lectures, two rooms with lectures, um, all very serious nutritional stuff. I mean, some of them I couldn't even understand the title, let alone the talk. Um, and then we went off the next day, we went to a tofu factory, and we went to some Buddhist temples, and we had a, an amazing time, and to this huge theatre at the end of it. Um, just the fact that we were there in Hangzhou, in China, having a vegetarian vegetarian congress was extraordinary um, and we've actually done it and we're going to do it again sometime. Right, one, one more. Um, yeah, why California? So if you just run through again. So we're here this year to support local organisations. Uh, sometimes just having a lot of foreigners in town can make a bit of noise and people take more notice, you know. Hopefully we can help you out. So run on again. Uh, also to let Americans know what's going on in the rest of the world. You, you don't do much geography in school here, do you? But uh, there, there is a big world out there. It's difficult in a big country. You tend to forget about the rest of it. Right, OK, one more. Uh, yeah, we need your money. <laughs> ah, that's why we're really here. When we do things in Africa, we send out emails saying, well, give us some money. So we want you to know that when you see this email from IVU, you'll think, oh, yeah, I've heard of IVU. They're OK. Let's give them some money. Right, one more. Um, now we're changing. And this is it's today, is this weekend, is the transition. Um, for the last 50 years, IVU has held a Congress every two years. Before that, it was every three years. So we sort of squeezed. Now, from here on, it's every year. We're stepping up and we're going all over the world. So, one more. Uh, this year, that's this one. Yep, California, go on again. Next year, we're going to Malaysia, to Kuala Lumpur and Palang. Now, Tracy, uh, let's go. Tracy's down on me. Tracy's organising the next one next year. So, yeah. Uh, we, where, is Brian here? Brian Jacobs? No? No. Where, oh, no. Brian's, a, Brian's a hypnotist. I, want, I wanted him to get him to hypnotise everyone, so you will go to Malaysia next year. Uh, right, OK. It's in October, but there'll be lots of publicity bonuses. Go on again. Uh, 2014, we're going to Africa, probably Accra, Ghana, maybe Nairobi. We've got to work it out. Uh, go on again. 2015, Latin America, Buenos Aires, uh, maybe Paraguay, but definitely Latin America, and a Spanish-speaking country in Latin America, right on again. 2016, Dubai in the United Arab Emirates, and one more. Uh, 2017, Shabari said, we want to go as far east in Europe as we can. So far, we got to Poland. If by 2017 we know anyone in Moscow, we'll go there. But so far, it's Poland. OK, and on again. Last one. Um, if you want to know more, our uh, long-running website, ivu.org, but we've got a new one. Where's Alex? Alex? Alex. Stand up a minute. This is Alex from Brazil. He's built us a new website. <laughs> at vegetarianvegan.org and that's going to be, we were just talking about it, we, now we've got a, 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 a IVU World Veg Fest we're going to call it every year um, we're going to probably focus that website on all the veg fests and Alex has done a fantastic job with that and I think if you click one more it should go off, there you go thank you very much